So anyone watching the video, I wish you luck today and may your week be fruitful like this apple I'm holding. Thank you guys so much. So today's video, I want to talk about uh, some things that will lead you to deportation in Canada. Now, recently I read some news where someone was deported and this person was on a visitor's visa. And in this video, I want to touch some certain sections of the visitor's visa and some of the things that you need to know that may cause you damage when you arrive at the airport in Montreal or anywhere in Toronto, all right? So if you are an international student who is actually moving to Canada, please, I want to emphasize on the visitor's visa. Those of you going on visitor's visa first, do you actually know what a visitor's visa is? That should be your first question. Secondly, do you know the things that you need to do in order to convert a visitor's visa in order to live for more than six months in Canada? Well, if you didn't know, you can only live on a visitor's visa in Canada for a maximum of six months. Even if the visa was given to you for 10 years, 15 years or seven years, you can only stay maximum six months in canada but now a lot of people a lot of agents are not telling their clients the truth people will do visas for you and they do not tell you that this is the duration in which you are going to stay in canada and for you to change the visa from visitors visa to a permanent visa which is a working permit they still don't tell you because of what most of them are not experts most of them do not know what to say they are only interested in what is going to benefit them but again wait and relax i'm going to talk about some things there is a video on this channel where i talked about how you can convert successfully convert your visa from a visitor's visa to a working permit in canada and i have been singing on my facebook page that it is literally somehow somehow very very hard all right to change it but of course am i going to encourage you to remain in africa because it is hard no i would rather encourage you to get the visitors visa and move in there take apply for jobs and try to locate some companies of course yes it can happen you can apply for a job online then you locate the company go there tell them that i saw this job i applied for it i'm on a visitor's visa and i actually want my visa to be converted because i want to stay longer in canada they will see that you are serious and they would be able to help you some cases may be rejected but in one out of 50, one will be accepted and you can be that one person who will be accepted. I know people will run to the comment section of this YouTube channel and say, in Canada, you don't go face to face to get job. Brother, It is everything is possible. Do what you think your heart is telling you and take advice from people. I am giving you the best advice possible. But you must remember that for you to convert this visa, it is going to be difficult some employers may not even talk to you again after you tell them that you are on a visitor's visa but it is possible so do something now you should remember that for the employer to give you the job for you to convert that visitor's visa to a working contract first the employer needs to apply for what is called lmia this is absolutely free and free of charge the employer doesn't charge you anything but you have to be careful because your only brothers your brothers in canada will charge you and collect your money employer doesn't charge you for lmia now when they apply for lmia it will be given to them all right but it takes time sometimes one month sometimes two months then they will give you the lmia you now go to the various offices and then they will convert your visitors visa to a working permit because they are giving that lmia that they are giving you the job that lmia is going to explain to them to the officials that you are actually on a visitors visa and of course you have a job offer remember this employer is not any type of quack employer this employer that is going to employ you is an established employer the company must have a reputable name this employer must prove to the government that he or she actually applied for this uh posted this job for more than 28 days at least 28 days then there was nobody to collect this job like 
a PR, a PR holder, a permanent residency, which is the PR, I mean, and a citizen. So in case the, 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 the employer is able to prove that there was no citizen or a permanent resident in Canada to collect this job, then you are now qualified to take the job as a visitor. Now, in this case, they are going to assess and change your stuff. Otherwise, this is the legal procedure you must follow. Yes, you can use a visitor's visa and you go to school. You can use a visitor's visa for other purposes, but if you intend to stay longer in Canada, this is the process, legal process found on IRCC that you are going to follow. Somebody was telling me that Milton, someone is working on my visa, but I do not trust the person. If you are this person and someone says he has submitted your visa application, right? Tell the person to show you a proof. The only place you can submit a visa for Canada is IRCC now remember that you cannot move to canada without biometrics you must do biometrics in case they didn't send you for biometrics my brother and sister i'm sorry this is not the visa uh, they are telling you about is not true now i have talked about the visitor's visa let's go back to the section what are the various ways you can move to canada as a visitor you can go to canada as a visitor in case a family member in canada invites you you can go to canada as a visitor if you just want to go and maybe visit some touristic areas or you can go to canada as a visitor if you have a letter from a conference or a conference letter or a letter to show that there is a conference that is going to happen in canada any moment from that time you want to move and remember, for you to take this trip, remember you are on a visitor's visa. You want to go as a visitor. Why are you visiting? You have a reason, and I've given you those reasons. Now, you need to prove that there is nothing back home holding you. If you work, you need to prove that you are on leave from work. But first, what are the documents? You need to get documents now from your company. Most of the time, I always advise people who want to go for visitor's visa that... It is best for you to go when you are on vacation. It is best for you when you are on leave from work. Remember, your employer needs to give you a leave letter to show when you are going for leave and when you will be resuming back from leave. There are other documents you need to attach to this. Now, if your employer is giving you this document and you are going for a conference, you need to attach the conference letter. If you are going for just tourism purpose, if you want to visit a touristic site in Canada, maybe the Ontario Palace or maybe Niagara Falls, you can then just write a statement of purpose. They call it a letter of explanation. Explain to the visa officer that this is this is this, this is where I'm going to be staying. This is where I want to visit. And for this so 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 number of days, this is what you are going to put on the letter of explanation. All right. You do not need any document. But in the case you are visiting a family member, they should give you an invitation invitation letter if you are going for a conference you should have a letter from the conference or the officials of the conference if you are going for study is something else this is not visiting study is a long stay visa or permit you are going to get so these are the various ways now someone was recently deported from canada let me elaborate about this so that you see reasons you cannot be applying for a visitor's visa you are going for tourism you are telling the visa officer that you want to visit a place a touristic site in canada and when you arrive at the airport in montreal or maybe in toronto they are asking you okay you are on a visitor's visa what do you want to do you said you want to go for a touristic site scene or is it sightseeing or you want to visit a touristic attraction they now ask you name two tourist tourist uh, attractions or name two uh, areas where tourists usually visit in canada or name two attractive places in canada as a tourist you are unable to to answer those questions how did you apply for the visa that is my question i'm asking you now who did you look for to help you apply for the visa these are things you need to put into consideration some of us we need to be serious and sit up you cannot be visiting a country especially like that canada again you do not know where you are going to be visiting you want to go as a tourist of course you need to have done research first my first concern is if you are unable to tell an immigration official where you want to visit as a tourist it means that you didn't do your research because if you did your research you actually applied for the visa yourself you will know that niagara falls is a tourist attraction area in canada then you have uh, toronto is this city tower is another tourist attraction area there is also a popular museum in in ontario that which is also a tourist attraction area all right there are many of them 
so you need to check all of this and have them at the back of your mind because you are going to answer a question at the airport before you move into canada if you do not answer these questions they are going to deport you and somebody was deported because of this she failed to answer the questions they asked her to name two tourist destinations in canada she couldn't answer and if you look at it very well agents were the ones who did her visa application so please if you are working with an agent you have to be careful always check details even if it's the agent who is doing your application ask questions ask questions you cannot just sit some of you an agent is doing an application for you or someone is doing application for you and you just travel without asking for anything if you are applying for your ircc visa yourself or if you're applying for a visa on ircc yourself make sure you know your password and your user's name because you may be asked at the airport to open your account it is very very important do not misuse this information i'm giving you otherwise you will be deported a lot of people are being deported again those of you asking for odoro odoro at the airport there is something called odoro all right the as something something if you do not know what odoro is comment in the comment section i'm going to tell you i call it adoro i call it paper some people have their own names they call it don't ask for it at the airport if you ask for it at the airport they are going to send you back or even if they give you at the airport they the other people that are going to be coming after you they would be sent back don't ask for that at the airport go in first settle down maybe look for a place and put your head down then you can now proceed and ask the competent officials i understand some of you are looking at advantages of asking for it at the airport but that is the wrong choice or the wrong decisions to make don't ask for odoro at the airport go in first before you ask for it i was even advising someone who came to me for orientation I told her not to ask for it at the airport. Now she was now telling me that others are asking at the airport. What if she goes tomorrow and asks and they send her back? Who will she blame? She will now come and blame me. No, she cannot because, but the problem is a lot of us, we do not listen. Please, it is very important. You have to prepare yourself to answer questions. Now, to those of you going for study programs, diploma programs, university degrees, you have to understand that you have to know the name of your school, the program and the duration of the program in which you are going to study they will ask you this at the airport they might ask you this and they will tell they might ask you where you are going to be staying of course you may not know where you are going to be staying but you need to know where you are going and the school name and all the essential details that are associated to the school the program and probably some courses that are going to be taught during the first semester you need to know all of this so that you put yourself in order this is just a random video i wanted to do more videos will be coming up tomorrow which is saturday so please stay connected and do not remember it is very important if you are doing the study abroad journey you should understand that this is how it looks like and it's going to be tedious if you do not put things at the back of your mind revise yourself prepare yourself watch videos do research before you go to the airport in case you are asked questions you should know how to answer these questions all right do not have a visa and you are deported from canada it doesn't make sense to me i hope this will help you till we meet again in another one